going to be making a zone and sector game. So the first thing we have to do is either get A3 paper or get two A4 papers and stick them together. So you can just fold the ends round on itself. We'll do it with the tape up. Okay, first of all, we're going to be drawing a little house right in the middle. Now you've drawn your little house, we're going to be drawing a cross right across the middle of it so that you've got a line going up through the centre of the roof and a line going straight across the middle of the house. This line is going to be the line that marks the north, south, east and west. I'm going to put the south at the top because it's the sun. The north at the bottom. And the east in the left and the west in the right. Because in permaculture we align everything to the sun because that's what we're trying to capture. Now that we've drawn our little houses and marked the north, south, east and west, we're going to take our protractor. If you need a protractor and you don't have one, I'm giving you a link in the description to where you can print out a printable protractor. But anyway, first of all, we're going to place it on the centre of our house with the line across the east-west line. And then we're going to mark the same degrees off the east-west line as our latitude. Here we're in London, which is 50 degrees latitude. So we're going to mark an angle of 50 degrees off our east-west line. And then we'll turn this over and we'll mark again 50 degrees off our east-west line. And then the opposite direction, we're going to go towards the north and we're going to mark 50 degrees off our east-west line and 50 degrees off our east-west line. Like that, we have marked all the angles of the sun's arc. The shortest angle and the longest summer angle. So to show you that again, we're going to put the protractor on the east-west line and then we're going to find 50 degrees and we're going to mark it off of that line. And then we're going to find the 50 degrees in the other direction and mark it. Then we're going to flip the protractor over so that it is facing in the south direction this time. And we're going to put it on the east-west line again and mark 50 degrees in one direction and 50 degrees in the other direction. That gives us our summer and winter sun angles. Remember to set the angle at exactly the same as your latitude from where you live. So now with the ruler, we're going to place our ruler across those two lines. Get a long ruler. If you have to have a short ruler, then place it on the center and mark out. And you can do it in all four directions using those markers as guides. If you've got a long ruler, you can just place it right across the middle of the two. And once you place it right across the middle of the two, then just mark, just a little mark right on the end. And then another little mark right on the end. So it will be across the middle of the house and on your two marks that you previously made. And the same again in the other direction. And this is just to give us guidelines for our sun angles. So to show you again, we're just going to place the ruler across the centre of the house to the marking lines that we just made. And we're going to mark the end of the ruler in both directions. Once we mark that, that gives us our guidelines for the compass work. What are sectors? Sectors are energies that come onto the land. Can you think of any energies that come onto the land, Florence? Wildlife. Wildlife, yeah. Any other energies? Noise. Noise, yeah. 
noise that comes on from somewhere. Or the winter sun. Or the sun, yeah. The sun, and we can have the summer sun and the winter sun. Summer sun as well. Yeah. Any other things that come onto the land? Wind. Wind. That's what we're doing with the sector. Giving ourselves a map of where all those energies come in and where they come from. And then we can play a game on how we can use those sectors. So now we're going to mark the summer angle. So you've got those lines that you've marked and we're going to go from all the way on the north side, the extreme of one side, all the way to the extreme of the opposite side. And that's the longest angle our sun is going to come that around the house. Sun. Yeah, that's the summer sun. And that's the longest angle. Now to work out our north uh, or our winter sun, we have those other marks that is short. That are shorter, and just move the compass a little bit further out, and we can actually mark another line which goes from one end to the other. Here you can see Florence has done her summer sun line, and now she is about to do her winter sun angles. Using the guidelines on the south side to show the minimum course of the sun. And now comes the fun part, we colour. And there we have our sun angles. What colour should we paint our sun angles, Florence? Yellow. Yellow. going to put in some other sectors. What other sectors should we put in? The noise. The noise? Where does the noise come from here? From the road? Yes. Yeah, where's the road? Which direction is the road? Maybe here. Towards the west. Yeah. Any other sectors we can think of? Wildlife. Wildlife. Okay, so which direction from here does the wildlife come? Where have you seen lots of wildlife? Uh, Out of the back windows or the front windows? Where? Over there. Over there. So that is towards the east, southeast. Okay, so we're going to now mark over towards the southeast and we get a lot of foxes coming in through from over there, have you seen a fox out there? Yes. Yeah, we get foxes, we get cats coming in, we I get saw squirrels. I saw a fox in my front garden, I saw both of them, and I saw a squirrel in my front garden. Yeah, we get parrots as well, don't we, sometimes? And I saw parrots. Parrots. Uh, what Pigeons. Else? Pigeons, yeah, we get a lot of pigeons. So we can that have a think about... Pigeon. What colour do we think we make the, the wildlife sector? Green, because it's all green. Good luck! Other sectors we can think of, Florence? Wind. Wind? So, southwest is here yeah, where the most common wind, I think, yeah. comes from. Sometimes you'll have two winds, not always the one. And sometimes you'll have sectors coming from the same direction. And that's easy to, to do on this map. You just make sure that the lines are a little bit further in or a little bit further out. Now that we've done all of our sectors, we can rub out all these little guiding lines. These little guiding lines that are there, we can neaten it up. And it's really important now so that we know, so we can understand the information there for us to put a key on it. Now a key is to give you a clear understanding of each of the sectors. Which sectors have we got, Florence? We got the sun or sun. So we're gonna do a little square and we're gonna color it in the same colour as the summer sun and we're going to write summer sun by it. 
And then we've got the winter sun, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the winter sun as the next one. We'll do a little square. And then we're going to do winter sun. And then we do for each of the sectors. So we've got one for the wind, one for the for the wildlife sector, and one for the noise sector. And whatever sectors you want to include on your, on your sector map. Maybe you can think of some other sectors that we haven't mentioned here that you can add to your design. Now we've done our sector map to show where all of the energies that come onto our land. We're going to do our zone cards to go over the top and do our zone game. For this, you need co colored card. Any different colored card is fine. You can even use the recycled card uh, from boxes and packets if you don't have colored card at home. First piece of card, you're going to need at least three different colours, or you're going to have to colour them different colours. And then we're going to place the pin of your compass right in the middle of the card. And then we're going to draw a circle, as big a circle as you can get on the card. Okay, and so now we cut out the circles. going to set the compass just inside that circle. So if we have that circle, we're going to set it around about one inch inside, but a little way inside so it gives some space. And that's, once you've set your compass, you're going to get your second piece of card of a different colour ideally. And this time we're going to be drawing a, a slightly smaller circle. Okay, and so Try not to put it right in the middle of the card because then you can use more of the card for something else later. We're going to do a slightly smaller circle, draw that smaller circle. Yellow Ooh. to match your jumper. Match my jumper. Yeah, and oh. then you're going to go again exactly the same as last time. You're just going to come just a, a little distance in from the outer circle that you had, about the same distance again, and then again. Don't draw it right in the center so that you can use some of the card later. We can draw the circle on and cut it out. So now we need needle and thread. You can use a split pin. At the moment I can't find a split pin, but you can use needle and thread for this part. So whether you have an, a split pin or you have needle and thread, both would work. Again, you will need an adult supervision for this so that you don't prick yourself with the needle. But then you're going to thread the needle, and then double up the string and tie a knot. So in the middle where you've had the little spike points of the compass, now you're going to thread it through. And you're going to thread it through each one of them. And once you thread them all through, you've got it like that. And then you're going to thread them through each of your holes and then make another hole right beside it where you're going to go through again because then you've got it really secure and go back through the hole again and just do a couple of stitches i've done it once you've got a couple of stitches it means that you can move all of the discs round and round but they all stay together so we can move all of them around, but they all stay together. Then you can cut off the remaining thread once you've tied it off a bit, gone through a few times. Can I cut it out and then you've still got that ability to move and they can all move around. So 
zones. So zones are areas of influence. They're where we look at human energy and how we interact with things. And in our zones, in this inner zone, in the yellow zone that we've put as yellow, whatever colour you've put it, and that inner zone is where you put things that you're going to want to visit every day. I draw a bunny and a kitten. Yeah. And then out from that, we've got this blue zone. And that's things that we don't have to visit quite so often, maybe every other day. And what have you put there? Swing, peas bed. Yep. So on my inner zone, I've put a greenhouse, a salad bed and a chicken. And then on the zone out from that, I've put some fruit trees and I've put a composter. Or lastly, furthest out on the pink that we've got as pink, whichever colour you've got it, that furthest out are things that you really rarely need to visit. I'm going to put a pond on my middle zone. And we're going to put all different pictures of things that you want to put in your zones all the way round. Yes, what do you want to do? I want an apple tree in the pink one. So these, they commonly refer to them as zone one, zone two, but whatever you want to call it, it's things that you want closest to the home and things that you want to put further away. Keep on adding things to each of the zones. So keep drawing in lots of different things all the way around. And now we can colour things in. And if you like, you can also put a key for those things. If you don't want to label them on the actual zone map, you can make a little, you can make symbols and colours and you can put a key for each of the things that are on the map. Now we've placed everything on, we can actually turn each of them to where we want things to be. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed making a zones and sector game with us and placing all your elements in relation to the wind and the sun and everything like that. Please subscribe. Tune in next time for, for more exciting games and crafts in permaculture design. We say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Yeah, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Where do you like to place the best? So where do you like to place the best?